Namo Namaha. Today I want to talk about um, the upcoming uh, workshop, the workshops actually, two of them, that um, Swami K. Charanatha and I will be teaching at the end of next month, um, June 2016. Uh, so we are going to be, there are two workshops. The first one is called um, um, Time, Breath and uh, Perception or Cognition. And the second is our Shaktipata, Descent of Grace. So today um, I'm going to talk about the second one, about Shaktipata. So there are all kinds of theories these days circulating among people interested in this subject on the topic of Shaktipata. What is Shaktipata? Who can uh, do Shaktipata? How does Shaktipata occur? Um, is Shaktipata re closely related to Diksha? Is the Diksha the expression of Shaktipata? All kinds of questions are there and there are all kinds of answers. But this will be the first opportunity for everyone interested in this subject to actually learn what Abhinava Gupta Pada Acharya had to say about this particular subject. So um, for this occasion I have translated chapter 13, both the shlokas and the commentary by Jaratha in completely. And so in this um, in the workshop we will be reading large sections as much as possible of the um, of the uh, of the text. And uh, so to hopefully this text will help disperse the doubts regarding this particular subject. Subject. So what we are going to do is we will um, Actually, I'm going to be reading the, the shlokas, Abhinava Gupta's uh, shlokas of chapter 13 of the Tantra Loka and along with Jarathra's commentary and will be explaining the meanings of the shlokas and also giving my own commentary uh, as I have learned from my own teachers. Um, Swami Kechan and Adha will also uh, comment and on the shlokas, give his own uh, interpretation and he, but he will connect this to the practices that he is going to be teaching, and in particular the Shaktipata transmission. So um, today I want to say a couple of words uh, about Shaktipata uh, and Pratibha, which is closely related to Shaktipata. So um, um, what does it mean? What is Shaktipata? How does uh, Lord Shiva graces um, and so what is the occasion for it? Is there any particular cause for it? So I'm going to say a couple of words. Um, so um, Abhinava Gupta first in the first uh, hundred slokas or so he first refutes the, the theories of other schools and then he pre begins presenting his own uh, theory and then he starts by saying that the Lord binds himself because of his freedom. It is because of his freedom that he binds himself. And Deva Svatantra Chidrupaha Prakasha Atma Svabhavataha Rupa Prachadana Krida Yogat Anuhu Aneka Kaha. So the Lord, who is all of these things, he is Prakasha Atma, he is of the nature of light, and he is also whose essential nature is consciousness and, and the essential nature of that consciousness is actually freedom. And so what does he, and he do? He begins to hide, he conceal his own nature and then assumes the form of all the knowing subjects of various seven, seven knowing subjects. And um, he does that svabhava, taha, at because this is his essential nature. This is the, the, the essential nature, intrinsic nature of his, of his uh, existence, to express himself, to do this, to, uh, to conceal his own uh, uh, purnata, his own, the fullness of his own uh, existence. And uh, <clears throat> I, I've heard the Swami Lakshmanjus beautiful <laughs> explanation, why does Lord Shiva uh, binds himself and he said it is because of too much bliss 
Oh, it is that punata, the fullness of his own nature, that he cannot tolerate anymore. It is just enough. He wants to cut it. He wants to stop it. And so he begins this expression, express, uh, assuming uh, um, um, various aspects of, in, of, of, of um, uh, phenomenal existence, phenomenal existence. Now, what happens after he does this? Tirod hihi purna swarupa apurnatvam tatcha puranam puranam prati bhinena bhavena sprahato lolika malaha. Now, when this concealment takes place, then that purnata, that fullness of, of Lord Shiva's nature, is um, becomes incomplete. And so this is what all of us, most of us at least, experience. We experience the emptiness. There is a need to fill it up with bhinena bhavena, with the limited objects. So people engage in all kinds of activities to accomplish this goal, to accomplish that goal, to make more money, to gain more power, all these things. But this can never really fill up that emptiness because the, this, this, this is... Uh, um, uh, of transient, it is of transient nature, and so this this is what is called and this this greed, this this uh, um, um, longing, this prahata, this is lolika, this um, intense desire um, uh, to fill up this emptiness is called mala. Uh, this is what is called mala. Now, in the process of Shaktipata, the Lord removes that mala. And so he removes that in various ways. And this shloka here just briefly says, how does this happen? So, Svatantriya Mahima Eva Ayam Devasya Yat Asya Upunaha Svam Rupam Parishudham Sat Sprishati Api Anutama Yaha Now, when in this limited uh, uh, existence, um, he now sprashati, he touches uh, Shudham uh, Rupam's, his own pure nature. That pure nature refers here to that Shudha Vidya. That Shudha Vidya disperses that notion of duality. And uh, so that contact is necessary. Sprashati, he touches his own. So but that, by touching it, that mala begins to dissolve. Now, what happens when this mala begins to dissolve um, is just like when, you, when we are in a completely dark room where all the windows are closed so um, there is complete darkness so now when we start lifting this the blinds on the windows so all the sun the light of the sun the energy of the sun the warmth the heat um, illumination all this uh, uh, come uh, come together with uh, uh, with that uh, sun, sun rays is together in, in the room and so illuminate the, the entire room. So in that in that same way, the um, this energy of Lord Shiva that after this mala is removed begins to penetrate that soul. So just like we can lift blinds on the window just a little bit, or we can lift blinds a little bit more and more and more. So there are there is a great uh, there is a varied degree of that, um, of the intensity of Shaktipata. So it can be very mild, it can be moderate, it can be very strong. And so Avinav Gupta goes there in great details explaining uh, various um, aspects of this uh, um, degrees of Shaktipata. Now, how does Lord Shiva graces? He graces us with knowledge. And the highest expression of this knowledge is Pratibha. Now what is Pratibha? Pratibha is, the, maybe the closest, the best translation is intuitive knowledge, or even better, intuitive insight. So knowledge, in Sanskrit there are usually two, three words that express, that mean knowledge. And uh, so knowledge uh, jnana is one word. That, that is any kind of knowledge. It can be uh, correct or incorrect knowledge. Or nishchaya, nish, um, nirnaya. Nishchaya or nirnaya. 
That means when, when we know something with certainty that this is so, this is a fact. So this is Nirnaya or Nishchaya. But they are both on the level of Vikalpa. They are both on the level of thinking. And the, and the Vikalpa is always limited in its... It cannot be. It cannot convey the reality. Even just the table. Uh, you need many Vikalpas to, to describe table, its color, its shape and all this. Um, so it's not, it is not enough. Uh, it, it is very limited in its nature. So, um, it, but insight, it is insight. Now, how is that insight different from knowledge? The insight is different from knowledge because it goes beyond time and space. It transcends Vikalpas. And uh, so it is usually found, for example, in, in between two breaths. In between, when we inhale, the breath reaches the heart. And, but there is, it poses there for a brief instant, for a brief moment, it poses there. Just before the inhaled, um, um, exhaled breath uh, begins. So there is a posing, there is there's, there's a sandhi. So this is the... The, the consciousness is actually, the contact with consciousness is, is in between these two, breathing and inhale and inhalation and exhalation. Uh, so one can, we can grasp it there, or we can grasp it between two thoughts. Just to be, be, when one thought subsides and just before another arises, there is also a gap between them. Or in the act of perception where subject and object meet, or in uh, between the dreaming state and uh, and sleep, so there is also that gap. There is a there is a place where one state of consciousness changes into another. So there are always there is always a possibility of grasping that, of having that insight, that flash of lightning that opens up, and uh, which is the door, which is the gate for the deeper understanding of the nature of reality. So, um, the, um, but, what I, yeah, maybe I was thinking, uh, uh, I'm not going to talk more about this, so uh, about Abhinav Gupta's um, understanding of uh, Shaktipata and Pratibha, just to say that he goes at a long eulogy of Pratibha. Uh, starting somewhere from Shloka 120, 25, 130 or so. Um, and he describes uh, all its aspects. He discusses this also in different chapter. What I'm going to talk now about is the um, um, in other schools, how other schools of Indian thought understand Pratibha. And uh, uh, it's, I think it, can, it will be very helpful for those people interested in our workshop to get some understanding of it. So um, this term is found almost in all the schools and uh, in particular is important in the school of uh, Sankhya Yoga school, Patanjali Yoga Sutras. He talks about that there. And um, now what is Pratibha in Yoga, yoga um, Sankhya Yoga school? Uh, so the knowledge that yogi, that yogi attains to the practice of concentration and meditation, when he experiences that pure state of pure consciousness, uh, when he experiences that state of pure consciousness, he acquires that pratibha, that deep insight, which in yoga system is identical to uh, sarvagya dva, the omniscience. Now, the consciousness is the condition of all knowledge. And so once when we know consciousness um, in its original form, then everything that is to be known can easily be known. Now, uh, um, perception. Now, how does the perception uh, take place uh, uh, in according to yoga, yoga Sankhya system? So on one hand, we have Purusha, the pure consciousness, the light that uh, the light of consciousness that shines and reflects in the in the mirror of the buddhi. On the other side, we have external objects. These external objects are vikaras, the modifications of prakriti. So their reflection also uh, comes back to the buddhi, which is the pure mirror. The buddhi, buddhi or mahat is understood in, in, uh, to be just like a, 
a pure mirror on, the, on which the reflection from external world and the reflection of Purusha, the light of consciousness, um, which gives it a life, actually, uh, they both meet there. So what happens is that this reflection that we get through the senses and which comes on the buddhi, um, they cause kind of a stir, you can say, on that mirror. They start, and this is what is called chitavriti, so the fluctuations of the mind. And uh, so the problem, the, the whole grand confusion happens when the buddhi, when the, when the purusha identifies, thinking that this is this is what he does, but, uh, but Purusha is inactive, he's not active. Um, so when, but he identifies with these, uh, uh, with these Vartis, thinking that they are his own movements. And so this is the problem. And therefore we have that definition of the Yoga by Patanjali in the very, be in the very beginning of Yoga Sutras. Yoga Ashita Vrti Nirodha. The Yoga means this, uh, the cessation of the fluctuations of mind. So when these chitavartis stop, that is yoga. And um, so now what happens with the practice of yoga? So with, when, when a yogin practices, he starts uh, with vichara and viveka. That means he first investigates things around and discriminates between permanent and impermanent, transient and, and transient. And as that practice con uh, continues, the disturbance, the distractions become uh, less. And that light of consciousness now better reflects, in, more clear and clearer reflects in the buddhi. And uh, as that uh, happens, then the buddhi um, gains knowledge. So the intelligence in the buddhi uh, becomes filled with understanding. And uh, so, when, the, when these chitta vrtis are then completely uh, managed, when the yogi manages to calm down completely these chitta vrtis, these fluctuations of, of, of his mind, then um, the, completely the attraction for the, for the external objects completely ceases. And uh, consciousness only, because consciousness only perceives its own light. And uh, <clears throat> this type of knowledge is in Yoga Sutra called um, is called Pratibha. Um, 